Miss Cat. That's her middle class. I feel good right now. I feel honored right now because I'm next to Rallo. <laughs> Go! Not because he made 12 mil. Not because he Rallo to keep that dog food. Not because he's a national god in the blood. None of that. I'm here because I understand his story for one. Um, I feel like the people around me can relate to him. And I feel like he inspired a lot of people around me. Rallo. Fam, go. <laughs> go. Um, it's just like I pictured. All your men are here. Everybody's with you. Ain't nobody looking skinny. Everybody looks nice. So my long time friend, y'all scooted, he came to my apartments. I was staying in this apartment, called Rock Street. It was our Rock Street in Atlanta, we called it the Bricks. And he came to my apartments and he was um, getting 10,000 a show. And I couldn't believe it. And I was like, how the hell you getting 10,000 a show, man? What the hell you going in the club? And then I went to a show with him and I witnessed him get 10,000 for one show. And I was like, if he can do it, shit, I can do it. And then I actually started rapping and started to see people getting 20s and 30s and fathers and feet of show. I couldn't believe it. I was like, shit, if they can do it, I can do it. D-Line, man, they getting all that free money. I want something to do it. And that's what I started doing. Hey, well, so you started rapping. I see you, Birdman, kind of introduced you back. I see you overall. 17, like Gucci man. One thing about Gucci man, let me tell first of all, let me tell you something about DC. We've always gravitated towards the south. We we in the east, but nobody gonna t you come around south east, they not gonna say your favorite rapper Jay Z. We gonna say I bump Boosy Gucci. Am I lying, y'all? We bump Boosy Gucci. So to see you sign the Gucci, it just is makes not makes it so much better because we already fuck with you without that. But it just snapped everything because we've been rocking with Gucci since he was the bunny, big belly, like me and Gucci. In the kitchen, Gucci. Right. And I'm a young little girl. <laughs> Talk about up in the kitchen. Like, that's just because of what we grew up on. So I just want to know, like, why Gucci and not Birdman? It was like. Honestly, a lot of my fans and a lot of people that support my music, they ain't even got motherfucking smartphones. They still got flip phones. They still got trap phones. And you know, I'm like, and coming from where we came from, we really, like, my man's over here who booked me for this show. He ain't got number 400 followers. This man be like, we never was hip or never even, I never even listened to many rappers. I ain't know what they had going on. I just used to listen to it to motivate me on the music tip. But honestly, I didn't never even knew that that Gucci had a fan base that large like that. And I ran into my man named Fool with the camera. He shoot out my videos and shit. And he kind of said, and he was like, all of us in D.C., we fuck with Gucci. I was like, I yeah, fuck with Gucci. Because I was a fan of G's at that time. Like, I always grew up a big fan of G's. At. So, you know, I'm the type of dude that picks sides. At that time, I was picking G's over WAP at the time. But until I started meeting the rappers and actually like talking to them again and know them, and I started to see like a lot of these rappers ain't who they say they is. It's man. So when I met Gucci, she, he just was a genuine ass person. Like I was like, damn, this nigga I've been looking for, this nigga that I want. I always wanted somebody to put me up under their wing, whether it was Birdman, whether it was Future, whether it was. I wanted some support and some help in some era. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like having a plug. Like you be looking for a plug until you get them bricks, and then you got now take off from that. So I was looking for a plug on the music business, and um, I wanted to be up under these people. But when I got around them, they weren't the person who I thought they was. And when I finally got around Gucci, he was the person that I was looking for that I didn't even think that he was. You know what I'm saying? So. When I got around him, I clicked with him instantly. He didn't want to sign no artists. I ain't want to sign to no artists. 
And, you know, we just end up getting together. He just texted my phone one morning, he was like, right on ready. I looked at the phone, I said, ready for what? It was like, it's time, it's time for us to put our stuff together. Mm -hmm. And then, ever since then, you know what I'm saying, we worked the contract out. It took us a couple months, took like two, three months to work the contract out. And, and that's what we were, you know what I'm saying? He been rocking with me ever since, you know. Artists need people like that put them on their Instagram, like do videos, do features. And a lot of artists got artists up on them that they ain't doing none of that for. All you gotta do is go look on their Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like he always support me. Like he tweet me every day, you know what I'm saying? He always post me on his Instagram, his Insta Snap, any song I want. He, every day he send me in my art my own engineer song. You know, we're working on our project. He ain't sending me no anything. He's taking his time out. And like, Rollo, I like this song. We're going to go with this song. And like, it just show you he care for me. You know what I'm saying? He care about my career. He care about our brand. And like, we just been clicking. And he like me the same way y'all like me. He love It's me. real. It's genuine. So speaking of genuine, like I said before, I feel like people connect to you because they feel it's genuine. They feel it's real. Like, when I listen to your music, I hear the things that you've done. But I've also heard the lessons that you learned. And I feel like a lot of rappers don't tell you the consequences of your actions of selling drugs. Right. We just turned up, we having fun. You know, niggas dying, but how do you feel about that, you know? So one of the things that touched me was you when you said, I see my little brother head red. When you spoke about the situation of your brother shooting himself. Right. And um, as black people, as black men, that's something that's not spoken about. As black people, that's not something that's spoken about. But I like to speak about real shit and that's something that's prevalent amongst us, period. I just lost my cousin a couple of months ago to the same thing. Years ago, I lost another cousin to the same thing. So my question to you is, as we all grow up, coming from nothing, going through things, I feel like we we, we so tough, we don't even want to express those those certain type of feelings. But we all go through things, so right. what could you tell somebody that maybe in your situation, they might be the next Rollo coming up, but at the same time, they got real shit going on. They don't know nobody, nobody. Like, but what could you tell them just to like keep pushing, like, man, make it through that, man. Right? You don't have to take that. You don't have to go. You don't have to go there. Just because of what you experienced. Like, if you could say anything. Like, if you could say anything to your brother before he left or anything. It, it, it's a different because like they what we got going on in the hood and what we got going on at home you know whether you're going through with your boyfriend at home you're not gonna walk out that door you're gonna hear you want people to see that you have you don't really want to see and that's the same thing with the music industry they don't show what's really going on and that's they were hidden and like i just came in the game and said fuck friends fuck relationships with other artists really fuck everything and i'm gonna be who i am and that's some shit that they don't even want in the industry period so all this time i've been rapping it always been like they trying to hold somebody back like trying to hold him back he don't need to be let let keep him right there. We just gonna use him for his muscle. All the artists that grab up on me, they, they they nobody never knew that I would make it this far. So with that being said, like they they just they just was on some shit to us. Like like they don't want nobody to like see this part. And then the people that's vouching for me, they come wait till I get a hit record. So whenever I got a hit record or whenever I got a record, it was like damn, we got Rollo. We got hope and Rollo. I always wanted this nigga to make it. I'm finna support him. Oh, he buzzed right now? I'm finna book him. Like, really? And then, like, and it goes to the point where, like, it more bullshit, like, more fake niggas than real niggas. Because, like, all the fake niggas and the haters, they gonna hate it. They ain't gonna want you to make it. You know what I'm saying? And all the real niggas, they gonna want you to make it, but it's more fake niggas than the real niggas. So, majority of the time, they gonna win. Because it's less of... You know, numbers rule everything. Numbers rule everything. So, like, most people were like, hell nah, I won't want him to make it. Hell nah. And I just said, fuck your favorite artist, fake, fuck all that. Um, they fake, and you can do whatever you want to do. I don't give a fuck. I'm just gonna like it or not. And then I'd rather have a hundred real niggas at my show than have a thousand fake niggas at my show. And, that, and, and, and I just been grasping more real niggas in. The people that got around that fake nigga disease, that fuck nigga disease, 
I curled them with it. I took them away from it. Hey, I was watching your interview on um, This Is 50 and he referenced something to you being Muslim as well as being a rapper and um, basically said, you know, although I'm Muslim, you know, I'm still a person, whereas they looked at upon me so harsh because I am a Muslim. But um, I kind of got upset with you when you said that because I felt like you were supposed to say, tell that man, like, so what? You know how many lives I changed? Mm -hmm. You know? You know how much charity I negate? Okay, what you talking about right now? It don't, <laughs> it don't really matter how much it is you do. They still, you know? gonna, they still gonna look at you as a bad person. We can go out there and got down. Me and you right now give chicken to all the homeless people. And everybody get what they gonna say. They gonna say that chicken went right. Mm -hmm. He gave them some old chicken. He lying in there. So like it don't it don't even matter like what you do. They still gonna find a way to criticize. It. And matter of fact, they gonna make it worse. Like you can go, we can go shoot somebody homeless, and they gonna probably say, "Rallo shot them people. That he a real nigga. He don't play. He tried to snatch the chain. So I'm gonna happen to so what? It's just like that evil shit. Like this shit just." just happened so like I just got tired of arguing with people like that so you want I ain't perfect I'm gonna go do some shit I do a lot of shit that not right you smell me so like it is what it is it just was funny to me cause I never heard in the interview oh you're a Christian so why do you drink yeah. alcohol yeah. why y'all ask <laughs> just, them that it just was it just was real funny to me but I do want want you to know that um you got youngins looking at you um you spoke at the school today so why do you think, why do you, what do you think it is that, why do you think youngers do rather people? Like, what is it that you like? Do you think it sounds different or was it just the jewelry? Because I know that you said that your jewelry, that's, that's really how people talk about it. See, sometimes, sometimes, a lot of times, the language that men you speak would be an unfamiliar language to others. It's just like somebody speaking Spanish to us. Like, we don't know what the hell they talking about. So, sometimes you gotta go speak their language. Sometimes you gotta get a little different. Sometimes you gotta do a little, little something just to grab their attention. It's my so like a lot of times like I did shit and it was just because like I, I post money. I got way more money than the money I post. I got I never show. I can't even show y'all how much money I got. So. So like, I, I post a hundred thousand, that shit petty. Sometimes I have to do that, because that's what they want to see. Mm -hmm. Well, I ain't got shit to prove you. This is not I got a bank account full of money, and I got a lot of money, but sometimes you just gotta do it. You just gotta do it. And sometimes I, I be saying I need to do it even more. Yeah. A lot of people tell me like, man, you need to post some more money, you need to go viral again. And I just be like, nah, I'm gonna just do it every once in a while. But that ain't really me. I just gotta do that. To get in their ear, to get their attention, and that shit crazy how you gotta do that. Like you down there gotta, you down there gotta tell on yourself. You down there gotta tell on yourself. I killed him. I'm a real gangster. I ain't gonna believe you until you got that show. Like you a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? So majority of the time, like when I when I got their attention, they start looking into me more, and then uh, you can't really deny a real nigga. You can't deny nothing real. You can deny fake. That fake shit always gonna come to the end though. Always. So, I feel like not only are you popular in DC because DC fucks the real niggas, we know that we fuck with Gucci and the and all that. But I feel like your relationship with Shaq Lizzy stands a lot of things as well. Because there's a lot of niggas in the city that hate Shaq Believe it or not, like they hate them everywhere outside <laughs> the city too. I don't know what it is about them, but they really hate them. But no matter if they hate them, they kind of respect with Shorty Gore. So link it up with Shaq Baby. Okay, what other artists in the industry? I know you got. 21 Savage, y'all. But is there anybody that you haven't worked with yet that you want to work with? The people that I want to work with. I got an old soul, and like, they probably ain't even working no more. I want to work with Mary J. Blige. I'm a big fan of her. I'm a, I'm a fan of Anthony Hamilton. Like, I like pain. I like struggle music. I like some shit that's going to help me. I think we could do that, though. Like, Rondo and Mary? Yeah, I want to do that. I want to do that type of shit. I don't really want to do nothing with people that do that. I like them. 
Oh, if I could get Jagged Edge, goddamn, I would get Jagged Edge. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I just like that type of music. I fucked the R. Kelly. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like. That's the only thing you fuck to do. Uh, whatever awesome come on here, Pandora. <laughs> I'm the biggest artist in the When he came out with, with Mary J, that rain and shit, like, a lot of that shit, like, just, it's just real music, it's authentic music. I can't really keep getting with the yard and all that shit. I can't get jiggled with that shit. So, how do you feel about hip hop today? I feel like that era kind of going away, kind of dying out, man, fool. Cameron was just talking about that and then getting back to authentic music. Like, you see Ross just dropped the authentic album. You know, we got Lucha, we got Rado, Dog going hard. We got real, real music coming back in. At first, that shit died off about five years. <coughs> and now, now it gained, it coming back, it coming back, it coming back, it coming back real good too. And it's about time for that. So how do you feel about how people say, oh, well, trap rap or that's not real hip hop. They not really talking about nothing. They not lyrical. They don't got no bars. Man, that lyrical shit ain't for us, man. That shit for them. We got that rap about our life and what we going through and our emotions. The South, we like soul food, chicken and shit. And we like, we, we emotional as fuck. Them motherfuckers ain't got real emotions or some shit like that. I, I can't even listen to no fuck lyrics. I don't give a damn about lyrics. I personally care about the message in the music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They messages and lyrics be some shit. Number four. Oh, he said that, that goes with that, and that mean that. I don't give a fuck about that. I want to wake up in the morning and listen to some shit that gonna get me throughout the day. I want to talk about some bills. These bills need to be paid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some shit like that. I can't listen to it. I don't give a fuck. That what the hell a lyric gonna do for me? I ain't, ain't got to say I'm lyrical. I don't give a fuck about it. I got y'all. Exactly. So, that's it for us. I feel like Rollo is everything, you know, I thought he would be. Um, I can say right now, I got a, got a, lot, of, a lot of people in this room to look up to you. And that's it is. We're going to Bliss. Club Bliss. bliss. <laughs> My first time in D.C. Oh. First time ever in D.C. And this is this story is so crazy because... You know the, you know, will come behind this shit for real. So like I said, for me to even to be sitting right here right now, Slim, this is real shit. Like, and I just want y'all, every rapper in the room, even fool with the camera, to see them do their thing outside this city. They got Rondo videos to, to with all the top people they shoot their videos. That make me want to go and do my thing because I know we come from the same thing. Yeah. And I don't ever want y'all to be there. Oh, my brother. And I just want to beat his ass sometimes. <laughs> but that would come <laughs> with you. Yeah, yeah, you know. And these video guys, man, they like the hottest guys for real. They, they busy than a lot of people. We're going to beat that biz ass. <laughs> We're going to beat that biz ass. Yeah, I want to get in the game so bad. <laughs> Hashtag, so before we go. Rollo, can you tell them where they can find you at? Hey man, you can find me on all social media at Rollo Famgoon, R A L O F A M G O O N. That's again, R A L O F A M G O O N. Look at all my chapters on World Star. Look at all my chapters on YouTube. It's a movement, fam. Go! Fast America. Stop right now. FML Gangsta 1 and 2, Dyro Streets 1 and 2, all on classics. And um, Rollo the Flop, 1 through whatever it may be. We're gonna drop that July 4th, 4th of July, Independence Day.